Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. This video will be the second installment of my Worst Entertainment Companies series, in which I shed a light on the questionable management and mistreatment of idol groups that we as fans oftentimes are unaware of. So this is a place for the worst of the worst entertainment companies. In this video, I'll be talking about TS Entertainment. While TS Entertainment might not be as well known as YG, SM, or even Pledis Entertainment, they too are guilty of mistreating their idol groups and staff members for years on end. I hope that by the end of this video, for those of you who are unfamiliar with TS Entertainment, will understand why they are one of the worst entertainment companies in the K-pop industry. Without any further ado, let's spill the tea, because it's really excruciatingly hot. TS Entertainment was founded in 2008, only one year after Pledis Entertainment cursed the earth. And for all we knew at the time, TS Entertainment might become worse. And they did. Um, the first group to ever make their debut under TS Entertainment was a rap duo called Untouchable, consisting of two members. Initially, the hip-hop duo was rejected by multiple entertainment companies. However, when former employees of other entertainment agencies started working at TS Entertainment, they made the decision to take the duo in, and so Untouchable made their debut on October 10th of 2008. The debut was fairly successful, and the duo is still signed with the company. They haven't released any music as a group since 2015, but both members have been active as soloists. And this is where it starts going south. In 2009, TS Entertainment debuted their first ever girl group named Secret. The group originally consisted of four members who made their debut with the title track, I Want You Back. The group's debut was not an instant success, and at the time they were known as Basement Idols, which sounds really bad. Um, because of the poor living conditions they were in, and their career did not take off until 2010 when they released their singles Magic and Madonna, both of them peaking at number one and two on the Golden Digital chart. They also won an award for Best Newcomer at the Golden Disc Awards that year, and their popularity only kept rising in the following years, allowing them to also make their debut in Japan, and in 2012, the members of Secret got involved in a horrible car accident. Three of the members were lightly injured, but one of the members suffered from broken ribs and a bruised lung, therefore halting their promotions and going into a short hiatus. They actively started promoting again in 2013, up until 2015 when they went into an unannounced hiatus, which is kind of confusing. On September 26th of 2016, it was announced that Sun Hua would be leaving the group after not renewing her contract with the company because she wanted to pursue an acting career, and Secret was going to continue as a three-member group. Or not. The group didn't release any music after that, and it will become pretty clear as to why they didn't. Jumping two years ahead in time, Sung Chi Un, member of Secret, submitted a request to terminate her contract with TS Entertainment for the following reasons. The company was supposed to pay for housing, car rentals, lessons, which they did not, even though it was stated so in her contract. Other contracts were being signed without Chi Un's permission, and she hadn't been paid by the company for a drama she had acted in. TS Entertainment was also sharing details of Jian's exclusive contract with an acting agency without her permission, which is totally forbidden in Korea. You can't do that. Jian ended up winning the legal battle and her contract ended up being terminated. So she left the group secret of- In the following year, fellow secret member Jung Hyosung also submitted a request to terminate her contract with TS Entertainment because she hadn't been paid since 2015. Let that sink in, okay? Like, that's a long-ass time. Even though she had been working, the entertainment company denied all of these allegations, 
Even though the court ruled in Hyosung's favor, TS Entertainment would not go down without a fight. They filed a lawsuit against her requesting 1 billion won for damages. They accused her of turning down multiple commercials, events, K-dramas, and other opportunities, causing TS Entertainment to lose a lot of money, according to them. They even accused her of embezzling money through advertising products on social media and not sharing the profits with the company. The legal dispute is still ongoing. Hyosung's contract with TS Entertainment has been terminated and she has signed with a new company and is currently preparing for a comeback. These legal issues ultimately led to the end of Secret, but I absolutely don't blame them. Like, it, they had every right to speak up about being mistreated because this is absolutely not okay. Like, if your company is not paying you, you should speak up about it and I'm glad they did because they clearly deserve a lot better than that. But this is not where it ended because TS Entertainment ended up doing the same thing, not might like probably even worse to their most famous board group, BAP. Let's dive into that. BAP was TS Entertainment's first boy group. They made their debut in January of 2012 with their title track, Warrior. Their debut introduced the public to a dark boy group concept. They would become immensely popular. Each one of their comebacks was a success and once again, TS Entertainment had a promising group on their hands. All seemed to be well until it was announced that all six members of BAP filed a lawsuit against TS Entertainment in November of 2014. The members wanted to terminate their contracts with the entertainment company, stating that their contract benefited the company, but not the members themselves. Their contracts did not start the day they were signed. They only started at the release of their first album, continuing for seven years from that moment onwards. The Korean Fair Trade Commission created a rule that limits the contracts of entertainment companies to seven years maximum to avoid idols being bound to a slave contract. TS Entertainment violated this rule by trying to work their way around it, and the profits from BAP's albums and concerts were distributed unfairly. The group brought in around 10 million won but each member only received about 18,000 won. That doesn't really make sense. And TS Entertainment denied all these accusations once again. But the madness doesn't end there as TS Entertainment have also been accused of mistreating BAP. Daehyun accused the company of mistreating them, claiming that the company did not allow them to take breaks, even though the members asked for them on several occasions. They kept them from seeing their families. They were not allowed to have phones. He also said that the CEO would scream at their family members when they requested to see the members of BAP, which is total insanity. They are acting like BAP are their prisoners. What? And it gets even crazier. They have also been accused of neglecting the member's health. They forced one of the members to perform when his hand was broken when the doctor told him that he was supposed to be resting. One of the members collapsed while performing due to stress and being overworked. He was taken to the emergency room and a staff member was sent to the emergency room to pick him up so he could continue performing at the concert even though he was not able to physically and he was supposed to rest. On top of that, the members had to pay for their own hospital fees, which that's something that the company is supposed to cover because the idols are under their care. The company also like, listen, Linda, because this is insanity. The company threatened to take legal action if the members refused to attend their schedules because of their health issues. And I honestly would love to say that this is the end of it, but it isn't. <laughs> Two of the BAP members performed with broken in-ears for three months because the company just refused to get them repaired. Even when the fans offered to pay for new in-ear monitors, the company was not willing to take them to get new customized in-ear monitors. They 
just don't care. And BAP went on a hiatus as a result of this ongoing legal battle. They did return to TS Entertainment in 2015 and I don't understand why because after all they put them through, they still went back to the company. How? Why? <laughs> Anyways, so they returned to the company, continued promoting, but it seemed that they had lost their hype. K-pop is extremely competitive. Every year there are new groups that are making their debut and they'll have had better training and they will be more well prepared in comparison to senior groups. It is essential to stay on top of your game at all times and the legal battle with TS prevented BAP from doing that and the hiatus greatly affected their career unfortunately. When the members' contracts expired, none of them decided to re-sign with TS Entertainment, rightfully so, and so BAP came to its end. Again, this group had every right to speak up about this mistreatment because this is just mind-blowingly crazy. And I absolutely don't blame them because that was the right thing to do. And I think it's just unfortunate that they kind of lost the hype around them because of this legal battle with their company. While this legal battle between BAP and TS Entertainment was still ongoing, TS Entertainment debuted another girl group. Sonamu made their debut with a song Deja Vu and the debut received mixed reactions. Mm. <laughs> some liked it and some other people found it too similar to BAP's concept. TS Entertainment's intention was for Sonamu to be BAP's sister group and for them to have a similar concept. When the members made their comeback, their concept had drastically changed and it seemed that the members were more comfortable with this concept. The group did have consistent comebacks in the following years, but still they seemed to fly under the radar for some reason. And it's very possible that this is due to the legal battles TS Entertainment found themselves in, not bringing the most positive attention to the company if you ask me. And most likely due to the lack of promotion, while Sonamu did appear on variety shows and they did have their own reality show, TS Entertainment really failed to promote them consistently. In August of 2017, Sonamu kicked off their Happy Box project, consisting of three singles that would be released over the course of three months. They released the first single Friday night in August with the help of crowdfunding through Makestar, which is kind of sketch, maybe? Hmm. Um, <laughs> they launched another crowdfund on Makestar in order to release the second single, which was delayed until November. Their second single was titled I Knew It, which is again kind of sketch that they would delay it even though they reached the goal of their crowdfund. Hmm, suspish. Um, in late 2017, one of the members of Sonamu, Unjin, competed on the KBS survival show named The Unit, in which several members of groups that have already made their debut compete to get a chance to re-debut in The Unit, a temporary group in the hopes of also drawing attention to their respective groups. That was... That seems so confusing. <laughs> Unjin ranked first on the show and re-debuted in The Unit. She promoted with them until September 28th of 2018, and the group disbanded after that. TS Entertainment had announced that Sonamu would be making... Is it Sonamu? It's Sonamu, right? Am I stupid? People are gonna come for me because I'm mispronouncing it. Whatever. Sonamu, Sonamu <laughs> would be making a comeback in 2019 to round up their Happy Box project. Like, um, finally, it's only taken you like a year or two? They had launched another crowdfund on Makestar in order to realize their goal, and this might allude to the fact that TS Entertainment is kind of broke. <laughs> The final comeback date should have been announced in February of 2019. Instead, TS said the comeback would be sometime around March. By the end of March, TS said that the comeback would be delayed to April. Hmm. 
weird. <laughs> According to TS, the comeback was still in the works, but it's June by now and nothing has been released and there haven't been any more updates. So it seems that they are kind of leaving Sonamu's fans in the dark, which is pretty messed up since they are the one that basically funded this comeback and they haven't received any updates. They have been waiting since November of 2017. That's pretty bad. In October of 2017, TS Entertainment debuted a new boy group named TRCNG. The group consists of 10 members and debuted with the title track Spectrum. Their debut was actually fairly successful and many fans were curious as to what the group would do next. And in January of 2018, the group came back with their title track Wolf Baby and this comeback also brought in a lot of new fans fans, but once again, TS Entertainment seemed to fail at promoting the group properly as they did not appear on a lot of variety shows. I don't really know if they've had a reality show, but the group hasn't had a comeback since January of 2018, once again leaving their fans in complete darkness. As for TS's current idol groups, I couldn't find any articles about them being abused by the company or being mistreated. Um, it could be that they are being mistreated. We wouldn't know what goes on behind closed doors, but I do want to give TS the benefit of the doubt and say that they have improved, but again, I don't know that. And I also want to clarify that starting a crowdfund to fund the comeback of your group is not a bad thing. It's something that a ton of smaller entertainment companies do because at the end of the day, they're small and producing a comeback costs a lot, a lot of money. Um, so in that respect, I don't think it's a bad idea, but it is kind of frustrating that if you as a fan have paid or funded this comeback, that it keeps getting delayed. And yes, the company might be trying to perfect the comeback, but it would be a good thing to actually communicate to the fans why it is being delayed rather than leaving them in absolute and complete darkness. As I said in the introduction, TS Entertainment has not only mistreated their idol groups, but they have also mistreated their staff members. In 2017, several former and current employees of the entertainment company came forward about their personal issues with the agency. They accused the entertainment of delaying payments and violating labor laws. The employees' payments would be delayed for months on end. Managers would have to pay out of their own pockets for company expenses. And some of these managers would be working more than 20 hour shifts without receiving any compensation. TS stated that they could not pay their employees because they're poor. Hmm. However, TS would go out on a limb to invest money that they didn't have to begin with to give BAP a comeback and send them on a world tour instead of paying their employees. Think about that. That's pretty messed up. It seems that TS Entertainment isn't in the best financial situation at the moment, hence why they are not promoting their current idol groups and why they have to turn to crowdfunding. They have mistreated their idol groups and staff for years on end, and they have to face the consequences today. But these continuous legal battles might lead to the fall of the company. Of course, we have to realize that what we know of this company comes from an outside perspective and there might be things going on behind the scenes that we are unaware of. And I'm not saying that to defend the company, but I do find that important to take into account. So that was my video on TS Entertainment. I tried to research this company to the best of my ability, but if there is any information that I missed, please feel free to leave a comment with any additional information that you know of. Um, if there are any companies that you want me to talk about in the future, please leave them in the comments down below. But I am looking for the worst of the worst because every company has done shady things, but I'm looking for the spawns of Satan. That's what I'm looking for. So I'm looking for companies that make Pledis and TS Entertainment seem somewhat decent so I can expose them in a future video.
I also want to say a quick thank you for 10,000 subscribers. That number is absolutely insane. And I am so extremely grateful for you guys watching my videos. I mean, if it weren't for you, I wouldn't be making these. And I'm really happy that the response to this series is so immensely positive. And I hope you're looking forward to what's to come because I have plenty more of horrible K-pop entertainment companies that I want to expose. <coughs> YG. Um, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. I hope you are having an amazing day. Bye, guys. <laughs>